Hospitalized mother who took my cheating wife's side over mine now wants to see me. It's been over seven months since I first posted on Reddit and I honestly thought that it was it for me as I didn't need any more advice. I had made my decisions and done what I said I would but I got a phone call this morning that has dragged me back into the mire. If you want to read about my story it's all on my profile under final update caught wife trying to cheat with friend from her iWatch. Edit link too long did not read. Of it is when I was putting my drunk wife to bed. I seen a message pop up on her iWatch from a friend of mine which sent me down the rabbit hole. I ended up walking away from my house that was to be left to me by my parents and severed my relationship with them as they took my wife's side over mine. While I wanted her out the house in my life as I had no interest in reconciling. My mother tried to keep us together and thought she was seeing us through troubled waters but I left the house and haven't spoken to them since, until this morning. I have moved 15 miles away, changed my phone number and am still in the process of divorcing my wife. She has completely ignored all the requests from my divorce lawyer to cooperate which has hindered things. We're now in the process of putting in an application for deemed service so she will be served officially and if she continues to ignore then I can proceed with a divorce without her input. Well this morning while at work I got a phone call from my friend telling me that my dad was trying to get in touch as my mother is not well and would it be okay if he gave him my number. I said okay and my dad phoned to tell me mum is in hospital, she's stable but not great. Obviously I was shocked and I've not heard my dad's voice for so long. It's the most emotional I've ever heard him. He told me my mum really wants to see me so would I meet him at the hospital tonight and go in and see her with him. I said okay and I've arranged to meet him outside the hospital. I ended up going home from work as I couldn't concentrate and I'm climbing the walls here wondering if I've made the right decision. Wondering if I'm about to get dragged back into this shit show that I walked away from. I've never felt so nervous in my life and the lack of control I have over the situation has sent my mind spiraling in lots of different directions. I feel like I'm walking into a burning building blindfolded with no idea where the exits are. Why does she want to speak to me now? Has she had a change of heart? Unless she's also had a personality transplant while in there I find that unlikely. Will my wife be there? I have no interest in ever seeing her again. I'm still angry about what transpired with them and the way they took my cheating wife's side over mine. I've been going back and forth in my head about going at all, but I will go. Was also thinking maybe seeing if she wanted to speak over the phone instead but not sure if she would do that or even if she's well enough. I feel like the bad guy here and that I might have caused this from walking away. How would you handle this? Any advice would be appreciated. How on earth did they justify taking your wife's side? I remember your posts. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. It hit home for me because I had a spat with my only living parent about boundaries in life. It got to a point I was more than ready to disown him and move on. The only thing you need to focus on is what's right for you and what you want. Your parents made their choice, now they can live with it. You can still see them, but you must make sure to keep your guard up. Don't let them manipulate you. Stay strong. You have bollocks the size of boulders pal. Whatever you decide, make sure it is the right call for you. Don't worry about the feelings of anyone else. You should make sure your cheating ex isn't going to be there. You should let your parents know if you get there and you see any sign of her you're leaving. Make that clear. Stick to your guns. You were betrayed by your wife and even worse your parents. I have to be honest here. I'm surprised you didn't tell your dad. Why didn't you have your daughter spend time with her? You know, the one who cheated on me, the one you chose over me? I sincerely hope this isn't some kind of bullshit ambush situation, where they intervention you into trying to take your ex back. Having said that, I agree with other commenters. Have people with you when you go to meet your parents, so they can be a buffer between you and them, and particularly someone who can make sure your ex is held at a distance, if she's there. Good luck either way. I hope you get things you want out of this visit. I would call or text your dad back before the meeting time and tell him that if your ex is there or if she is even mentioned you will leave immediately and block him. Maybe this situation has made them realize how hurtful they were. Or, she may try to use this situation to guilt you to do what they want. I lean towards the latter. You made good decisions, be firm and don't let them manipulate you if this is her plan. Can you call the hospital to find out your mom is actually staying there or have a person you can trust to confirm it? My boyfriend, 18M hates how passionate I, 18F, am about politics. I'd like to say this first, overall our relationship is really healthy and I love him very much. However, today I saw a post making fun of George Floyd. I don't care if you don't support this movement and I don't want to hear it, and I was commenting on it because I thought it was extremely offensive. 
My boyfriend agreed. However this spiraled into a long debate about how, I am too passionate about politics and it bothers him. I am a mixed, black, white, bi woman and I grew up being extremely involved in politics. I like to stay informed. I grew up doing debate and overall I'm very passionate about what I believe in. So, I feel like that passion is a large part of who I am as a person. Not to mention I have really severe ADHD so I love talk about my socialized interests and politics, civil rights issues tends to be one of them. He went on saying he hates how aggressively passionate I am about certain topics and that he wanted me to never talk about them around them because it annoys him. He also mentioned how he doesn't like when I call out people who don't agree with me. Which, I don't, unless what they're saying is extremely offensive, like a long debate I had with the weakest link in my friend group about why white people shouldn't say the n-word. I think standing up for what I believe in is a good thing, as well as being able to have a healthy proper discussion with other people about it. And I understand to a point, when someone is saying something I feel is honestly genuinely ignorant I can be ruthless and tear them a new one. I have awful rejection sensitivity, and, again, politics is just one of many topics I talk at length very passionately about. So what he was saying felt like a personal attack, especially now that I have to avoid even bringing that stuff up around him. I don't understand, we have very similar political views and it just feels like he doesn't like the fact that I as a woman have very passionate opinions on things sometimes. He also said that sometimes when I talk about these things it makes him feel dumb. One of the things I like about myself, is I feel like, at least when it comes to subjects I'm knowledgeable in, that I'm genuinely pretty smart and articulate. Now I just feel like a part of me is being rejected by the person I love. I try to shut up about things I'm passionate about around everyone else except him. Because of my ADHD I tend to talk a lot without realizing it. So now I feel like I can genuinely be myself with anyone now. He pretty much shut down when I tried to talk to him about this, literally saying, okay, is that it? When I opened up to him about why what he said upset me before ignoring me for his phone. Honestly, I just feel so rejected by this. Too long did not read. My boyfriend says I'm too aggressive and passionate when I talk about politics. This is something I truly am passionate about, so it feels like he's rejecting a part of who I am. I think you should try and find some like-minded people to discuss politics with. There's nothing wrong with being passionate about it but then there's also nothing wrong with your boyfriend not being passionate. Trying to engage your boyfriend in something he's not interested in is only going to ruin your relationship. He'll likely see it as you trying to force it on him. He's not rejecting you, he's simply not as interested in politics as you are. I try to shut up about things I'm passionate about around everyone else except him. Because of my ADHD I tend to talk a lot without realizing it. I was going to say you guys may be incompatible but considering this is something you mitigate with others, maybe it's excessive passion that you could find other outlets for. There is a distinct difference in being passionate about a topic and in debating it with your loved one. Politics is one of those topics that people can be particularly off-putting to those who do not have a particular interest in it. Don't try to convince him of the rightness of your position. Simply ask that he support your right to advocate your position in discussions with someone else. Well it's like that crazy uncle at Christmas time talking about politics, it's sometimes too much or just boring to talk about. It's probably more an issue with the delivery, and not so much the subject matter. There is a reason polite people don't talk, politics or religion. It usually ends in butthurt feelings over something that didn't need to get argued over, didn't solve anything, didn't change anyone's mind, but still ruined the evening. You can find plenty of people to argue with or agree with you on the internet. Don't make that your boyfriend's job. I think your boyfriend has a point. You should try to understand that your interests are not his interests. If politics is all you can talk about and he has no interest in it at all, I think you should accept that. Sure, he might could have been nicer saying that, but perhaps he already tried to do that before and you just did not listen, or realize. I have a friend that is very passionate about a certain thing too, and it is incredibly annoying for me to listen to it every time. He just does not shut up about it and the countless times of subtle hints are ignored or he really doesn't see them. A relationship, and friendship, includes giving and taking, and sometimes the taking just gets too much to handle. My boyfriend though our baby wasn't his. Hey Reddit. This is on phone so apologies for formatting. A year ago me and my boyfriend welcomed a new baby into the world. A little bit after our delivery, hours, my nurse was ending her shift and being gong in the nurse that was taking over. 
They were GOIG over vitals, ECT and the nurse handing me over to the new nurse mentioned that the blood type results returned and she was type B I thought nothing of it and when both nurses left my boyfriend was off. I asked him what was wrong after feeling he was acting strange and he came and sat next to me. He explained we can't physically have a B blood type baby we are both oh I laughed because honestly it wasn't clicking for me. I said well I don't know what you mean. And he said well is there anything you want to tell me? I was clueless as to what he was getting at but finally it clicked he was basically asking if someone else was the father and I immediately felt my stomach drop. When the nurse got back it was so awkward. I think she could tell we were off because I asked her if she could check the blood type again and she immediately said. UK ow what I actually double checked that because I saw your blood types and that didn't make sense and yes, baby is O. Not B. Honestly her confirming that just passed me off more. My boyfriend had so many options before just accusing me of cheating. He could have asked them if there was a mistake. He could have told me he thinks there was a mistake. But instead he waited for the nurse to leave and ask if I was cheating. When the air was cleared he was sort of apologetic. He felt he was in the right for thinking that simply based on the fact the blood types didn't add up and I felt like he was discrediting the commitment to one another raising our two previous children, our home, our 10-year relationship. I personally feel like I have never done anything to tarnish this trust. We have no history of affairs and I'm pretty much a homebody. I'm confused and still feeling upset, even after we have talked about it together after the fact. It just feels like he stands by his belief he did T really do anything G wrong and I felt different about him ever since. In a way, my emotional trust in him has shifted. Thanks for any insight. This isn't a situation that you will really be able to comprehend. You'll never question if your daughter is yours but there is no guarantee for men unless you get a paternity test. In that moment he was hit with what he thought was a fact that meant there no way that your daughter was his. The best comparison I can give is that, let's say you have a mole. You go see a doctor and they tell you that the mole is cancerous. You now believe you may have cancer. But let's say when you go see the specialist and he tells you that the diagnosis was wrong and you'll be fine. You'll obviously be relieved that you don't have cancer but, before that you thought it was a fact in the moment that you possibly had cancer. There is only one option if the blood type was, B. What did you expect him to think? The nurse made the mistake, not your BF. He reacted to, impossible news, and good for him for not just walking out. This was a mistake by a third party that probably shook him to his core, and you as well. Stop playing the blame game and move on. He didn't do anything wrong. Go to couple therapy, is my best advice I would be like you if I was in your situation. You wanted him to act in a calm rational way. However he likely got caught up in a ton of emotions and I don't blame him at all. If a blood test told me my kid wasn't mine I would instantly start freaking out on the inside. I think you should give him the benefit of the doubt. Is this really a hill you want to die on? Paternity fraud is true for about 1 in 50 children. Blood types not matching is easily enough proof that it would absolutely get me asking questions. He did nothing wrong. He questioned what was placed in front of him. There was a mistake made of not his fault. You are hurt by his inactions to what was brought forth to him. It was a misunderstanding. As mentioned in some of these posts y'all need couples therapy. A lot of guys including myself would have done the same thing. Honestly, his reaction was justified. There's no denying science and I'm sure the nurse caught him off guard. You should not read that much into this. It was an honest mistake. Human error by the nurse it's fine him thinking of you cheating is one of the first and most common thoughts men can have in this situation. I don't think you should think too much of this. When I read the text and he said your baby physically can't have blood type B because you have O. I thought of cheating too carrot carrot. Dot it's such an obvious common thought. My 42M stepchildren want me to adopt them. I don't want to. How do I tell them? It's as the title says I have two stepchildren who I love dearly Brianna, 15F, and Tom, 13M, whom I've known for five years. Recently it was Brianna's birthday and she asked if they could be adopted. It must have been a big step for them to take and I am overjoyed but I don't plan on adopting them. When their mother and I got married we agreed to keep our finances separate because we didn't believe in sharing them. If I were to pass away my brother would take control of the money and if she passed away her mother would. This may sound weird to some of you but that is the stance I've taken. The main reason I don't want to adopt them is because of inheritance reasons. I have a 16-year-old, Paul, who is my world. I'm not ashamed to say it but my love for him is infinite and he is the apple of my eye. 
When I pass away I want him to inherit everything I own. I feel this is my duty as a father and something I promised myself after his mother passed away. He will take everything I own when he pass on. The thing is I am worth a lot more than my wife. We share all the living expenses and I pay the lion's share but my net worth is somewhere around 5 million and hers is probably 500k. A lot of my net worth comes from a business my deceased wife and I built up. On her deathbed she made me promise that all our money would be used to take care of our son and this is the most important promise I've made. Dot. I know there are avenues to adopt them without sharing the inheritance but I don't want to put everything on the line because things can change and my wife and I both agreed we would never adopt the other's child as long as we were both alive. It's blatant favoritism and I know but it's something I cannot hide. Things like their university their mom will be paying and there is a possibility she can but I told her I wouldn't pay and she shouldn't have to pay for my son. Now I need to tell them I can't adopt them. How do I tell children that I won't adopt them? I don't want them to feel rejected because their father did that to them. Is there a better way to put it than, I'm not going to adopt you? Too long did not read. My stepkids want me to adopt them but I don't want to. How do I tell them? But I don't want to put everything on the line because things can change and my wife and I both agreed we would never adopt the other's child as long as we were both alive. If you've decided this together, you and your wife need to sit down with the kids and discuss this. Ideally with a therapist because this one is going to hurt. Edit. I'm curious. Dot you discussed the legalities with various lawyers in terms of adoption, inheritance etc. What exactly have you got in prenuptial contracts, marriage contracts? In most places, your spouse will inherit a big part of your assets. Dot how did you make sure that everything goes to your son? Also. Dot how would your wife be looked out for if you suddenly passed? Just tell them straight up don't be surprised if they're hurt though. To these kids it's just gonna seem like it all comes down to money. Like it's more important than them, and that's gonna hurt. Just tell them the straight truth. Er not doing them any favors by trying to sugarcoat it. People can be cold-hearted, and what better way for them to learn than from their stepdad. Rejecting them is exactly what Er doing, so just do it quickly, like a band-aid. I mean you clearly don't love them like your own son if you're going to treat them so differently like that. I struggle to see any result in which these kids don't become bitter and resentful towards you and your bio son. Wow. I don't know why those kids even want you with a reply like that. Reddit save me. Make me feel better about being an ass. Reddit doesn't do this shocked Pikachu and showing your ass. You might have money, honey, but you're missing class. Just show them who you really are they won't want to be adopted by you anymore. No offense but it doesn't sound like you were ever ready to get married again. This blatant favoritism is appalling. One moment you say you're worth 5 million and the next say you aren't even willing to pay for stepchildren's college? GTFO. I feel bad for these kids. You just need to tell them, I do not want to adopt you because my son would have to split his inheritance. The main reason I don't want to adopt them is because of inheritance reasons. I have a 16-year-old, Paul, who is my world. I'm not ashamed to say it but my love for him is infinite and he is the apple of my eye. When I pass away I want him to inherit everything I own. You said it yourself, while you might love them, you love your son more, they deserve to know and they will feel rejected, because you are rejecting them and of course you are allowed this and there's no fault with taking care of your children, but I can't help see it from their angle, because they seem to love you, but I think it better they know what kind of person you are, as much as the truth will hurt.